Hello everyone and welcome back to J1 Aviation. So on this channel we'd like to review a couple questions from the FAA Private Pilot Test Prep. So since I've been under the weather, I thought today would be a good day to chat about the pilot's I'm safe checklist. So what is the I'm safe checklist? Well, just as you pre-flight an aircraft and make sure it's airworthy, the I'm safe checklist is sort of an airworthiness checklist for the pilot. So it's part of the total risk assessment for the flight. Before we go flying, we assess the weather, we assess the aircraft, and don't forget to, you know, take an evaluation of yourself as well. So one of the best ways pilots can <clears throat> help mitigate total risk um, for yourself is using the I'm safe checklist to determine your mental and physical readiness for flying. The I'm safe is an acronym which stands for illness, medication, stress, alcohol, fatigue, and emotion. And generally when we are evaluating ourselves, it's generally not just one of these things that impacts us, but several of these things build upon each other. And as we go through this, you can see that some of them go together like illness and medication, stress and emotion. So we really want to properly evaluate ourselves before we go flying. <clears throat> okay, so beginning with illness. So some of these are more obvious than others when we're evaluating ourselves. And I think illness is one of the more obvious ones you can tell when you aren't feeling well. When we're sick, we're not ourselves, we feel spaced out, our judgment can be cloudy, things seem to slow down, they go in slow motion. And you know, when you're making a landing, even on a good day, you need lots of focus and concentration. So we don't wanna be in a position where we need that focus and concentration, but our body just can't deliver it. It's not up for it because it's under the weather. And this also has varying levels also, right? So, you know, do you have the sniffles or do you have, you know, a bad sinus infection where your ears are going to be popping and hurting as soon as you take off? Many airlines, you know, have pilots sign some sort of form before they go flying that they are fit to fly. And it's really a good practice for all of us to be doing that. So the next is medication and this kind of goes along with illness. Usually for these first two, you have both, not one or the other. You know, like illness, medication can slow judgment. Now, in some cases, there could be low risk, right? So like, say you have a cough, so you take a cough drop. You know, that's a lot different than you're not feeling well and you haven't been for days and been taking Dayquil and NyQuil. So with medicines like that, there's another factor, like the drowsiness factor that can kick in. So we need to be mindful of the labels on the medicine right if it says you know may cause drowsiness or do not take while driving or operating heavy machinery you know then you shouldn't be flying while you're taking those also and the faa has on their website fa.gov some advice for taking medicine the general rule is to wait five times the maximum dose interval so if a medicine is you know you're taking every four to six hours you take the maximum six, multiply it by five, you get 30. So that's kind of the FAA advice on medication. Then in this case, you would, you would be okay to go flying 30 hours after you have taken your last dose. So the next one is stress. <clears throat> now everyone has some sort of stress in their day-to-day -day life, but we need to recognize when stress starts to impact our ability to think clearly. Is the stress actually impacting our mind? Some of the more common issues around stress regarding family, relationships, work, money. Um, stress causes concentration and performance problems. Flying requires a high degree of concentration and performance. So we don't want to be flying when these things are impacting us in any way. The next one is alcohol. And this one is regulatory and prevents you from flying. So the general rule eight hours, bottle to throttle, blood alcohol content of 0.04 or greater. However, <clears throat> FAR 9117 says you can't attempt to operate an aircraft while under the influence of alcohol. So just under the influence, I mean, that kind of can leave it wide open to any amount. And when it comes to alcohol, there's actually a couple questions about this one <clears throat> on the FAA knowledge test. So of course, you're going to get the questions about eight in 0.04 so you want to make sure you remember those two values but then there's two more here we can just look at quick uh, the first one under what condition if any may a pilot allow a person who is obviously under the influence of drugs to be carried aboard an aircraft 
And then the answer here is A, you know, in an emergency or if the person is a medical patient under proper care, right? So that makes sense. And then which is true regarding the presence of alcohol within the human body? Answer is C, even small amounts can impact decision-making ability, right? So with this one, you know, you don't want to mess around with it, even small amounts can impact the ability. Then the next one, F, referred to as fatigue. So fatigue, like some of the others, can slow our judgment, is tied to stress. You know, you may just be a little tired after work, and probably that's not a problem. But going several nights with little sleep, maybe because of small children or working crazy hours, fighting a cold, this is where fatigue can really hinder piloting abilities. And this is something the airlines are concerned about as well, right? Commercial pilots have strict rules around the hours they can work and the hours that are crew rest. And this is because there have been several incidents and accidents related to pilot fatigue and poor decision making. And then the last one is E for emotion. Now, emotion is kind of a tough one, you know, am I emotionally upset? How do we really define where the line is where emotionally we aren't fit to fly? You know, it's tied to stress, has something made you sad, angry, upset? Um, again, all of these things kind of take our mind off flying, which is really the problem. So that's the I'm safe checklist. We want to run through these things in our mind before we go flying. And I mean, even without this checklist, you know, subconsciously when something is impacting our performance. We already know this. We have like an inner conscience, which, you know, when we're starting to get into a gray area, kind of goes off. And we just want to make sure we're always erring on the side of safety. And, you know, we want to think about the possible outcomes as well, right? I mean, what if you continue to get more sick? What if you need to take more medicine as you're even flying? You know, where will all of this lead? So we need to be mindful of all these things. Um, and some of these things might be embarrassing to admit, but you know we don't ever want to box ourselves into a corner you know good pilot needs to be thinking of these things and you know a good pilot isn't too prideful to step back when that's the right decision so thanks everyone for riding along today we'll hope you join us on a future flight thanks for flying j1 aviation